In this video, we are going to see how to set up Okta as the identity provider for a OIDC client application. So in order to configure Okta as the identity provider for a OIDC client application, let's first sign in to Okta. I am using the developer, the free developer account and I already have an account with Okta and I will just sign in using my Google login. So once I sign into Okta dashboard, I, you can go to the applications and view the list of applications. These are some default applications which are already available in Okta. So uh, what we need to do is basically set up a client application which supports OIDC with Okta as the identity provider. Uh, in order to do that, we will use one of the applications that is easily available in the internet, which is the OpenID Connect Playground. You can search in Google and you will get it. Uh, and this application, this is just a, basically a simple website that is maintained by Auth0, which is a, another identity product, which is also owned by Okta. So this page has, uh, what do you say, a built-in functionality where you can configure any identity provider. Um, as the uh, OIDC identity provider, and then do some basic configurations to redirect to that identity provider to log in using that identity provider. So, so let's um, uh, take it one by one step. So the first step is to actually create a OIDC application in Okta. So let's go back to Okta and create a OpenID Connect application as and select the application type as web application and let's name it as opta oidc app. and if you look at this redirect uri this will be the url where opta will post the authorization code on a successful authentication so this should be the client applications url a particular url within the client application which can receive that authorization code to perform the next step, which is to exchange that authorization code for a token. So if you go back to this OpenID playground, you can check this redirect URI. And this is the redirect URI. Just copy it and paste it here. You can remove this sign out redirect URI. We are not going to test it. Like it's mainly for the single logout. We are not going to test it now. And let's select allow everyone in the organization to access this application because we are just testing it. So click save. So the OIDC application, that is the playground application is now configured in Okta. And we have to now configure these Okta URLs, the login URLs in that playground application. So in order to do that, let's copy this Okta domain. This is my developer domain. And if you log in using your developer account, Okta will generate a different developer domain, like some dev hyphen, some number dot Okta.com. So this is unique for each Okta tenant. Uh, so for your tenant, you will have a different domain. For my tenant, I have this domain. So I copy this domain, go here and go to the configuration. So by default, this application uses Auth0 uh, as the identity provider, but I can replace this Auth0 domain with the Okta domain and click this use Auth0 discovery endpoint. Uh, so basically what it did was it used this Okta's domain and then uh, it actually contacts the Okta well-known OpenID configuration URL to get all these endpoints like the token endpoint all those details. So the next step is to replace this client ID and secret with the Okta client applications, um, client ID and secret. So you can go here, copy it, replace it, and then copy, replace. And let's just use OpenID profile email for now. Uh, let's not worry about the remaining phone attributes for now. So, so now this, Playground application is configured to use Okta as the identity provider for its OIDC federation. So the next step is to create a user in Okta 
to log into this particular application. So I will use oops, Opta UIDC user. You can give some dummy email address and set a password using the admin option. So this user is now created and this user should get automatically assigned to this application which I created here. So if I go to this applications assignments tab, I see that user which is Opta OIDZ user at example.com. The reason is when I created the application, I selected the option allow everyone to access this application. That's why by default, any user that you create in this Opta tenant will get assigned to this application. So let's copy this username, which is the email address, go back to this playground and start the OIDC transaction. Click start and it will redirect to Okta. Enter the username and password. So the login is successful and Okta posted the authorization code back to this callback URL which is in the OpenID Connect Playground. Now, when I click Exchange, Okta will use this authorization code to exchange the tokens, which is basically the access token and the ID token. So if you look at here, I got the access token and ID token. And when I click Next, it shows the ID token alone. And once I click Verify, it will show the ID token attributes, which is basically the user that I created, the Okta OIDC user, Okta OIDC user at example.com. Then there are certain details. This audience is basically this, uh, if you go back to this client ID. So this client ID is same as this audience. So which means this ID token is generated for the client ID, this particular client ID, which is which actually refers to this application, which is the Okta OIDC app. And there is one more additional claim which you see here, which, which is called as AMR, and it says PWD, which means uh, this particular user logged in to this application, got authenticated in Okta using username password authentication. So uh, let's see a different scenario where I enable MFA for this same application and Okta will actually uh, populate this particular claim with a different set of values. Let's see that particular scenario. So I will go back to Okta and sign on tab and I will add a new rule which says Okta MFA. And when I go to this Okta, multi-factor so let me actually right now only sms authentication is enabled but i want to actually use the okta verify app so i will enable this okta verify app and then i will say enable push notification and enable this option all push challenges click save so i have enabled this okta verify let me actually disable sms i don't like it's giving some error but that's fine so I, I'm going to use this Okta Verify uh, option. And here in the policy, uh, make sure you enable this prompt for factor and then select every sign on, which basically means every time I try to sign into any application, it will trigger the MFA flow and ask me to verify my MFA factor, whether I log in for the very first time by entering my username, password credentials, or I try to single sign on to some other app where, and Okta reuses the existing authentication session. In both these scenarios, Okta will trigger MFA if I select this every sign on option. So let me click save. Let's go back to that Mozilla browser. And if you note this AMR claim for the first login flow, it shows PWD. Let me actually start this flow again. So now if you see, it didn't show me the username password dialog because the authentication session is still valid. And since I enabled both Okta Verify and SMS authentication, it is showing both these options, but I'm going to use Okta Verify. And since I have not set up any of my MFA factors, it is showing the screen. 
So once I click this setup, it will ask whether my device is iPhone or Android. Mine is iPhone and I have already installed the app. So I'm just going to scan this QR code and that should actually kick off the MFA flow. So the scanning is successful and the Okta Verify is enabled. So let me click finish here. So again, the a new authorization code got generated for this transaction. I will exchange it for the tokens. Click next, and then click verify. So here, if you see this AMR claim, remaining claims are exactly same, except maybe this timings, this IAT expiry time might be different. But if you look at this AMR claim, it shows PWD plus MFA plus SWK. SWK is something specific to Okta, but the main thing is PWD plus MFA, which basically means I log into this application using a username, password, credential, which So in case you are building a client application which has some sensitive data and any user who logs into that application to view that data should use a multi-factor authentication, you can actually write a logic in your application to validate the ID token and check this particular claim, the AMR claim in the ID token to make sure the user logged in using username, password credentials and an additional MFA factor. And if you don't see that additional MFA factor in the AMR claim, then you can write a logic in that uh, application to reject that transaction. That is the user can't view the data. Or you can uh, write a different logic wherein you can redirect the user back to Okta to trigger the MFA flow so that the user has to go through that multi-factor authentication flow and Okta will again generate a new authorization code and the application will again get a new ID token, which will have this MFA value in the AMR claim. So this is a very important claim in the ID token. Uh, and so that's it. So this is how you set up a OIDC application in Okta. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can post it in this YouTube video. Thank you.